Hello everyone, this is Richard from Modern Healthspan. We've received many requests from our audience for the latest news on Dr. Katcher's experiment with E5, which is the new name for Elixir. We are happy to say that we have a brief update from Dr. Katcher's team. We would like to thank them very much for giving us the data. Please note that the project is still ongoing and this is just an intermediate update. Before we jump into the figures, let's have a quick look at the original experiment. But first, a disclaimer that in this video, we are sharing news that we found interesting. It is not a recommendation or medical advice. In recent videos and in our interview series with Dr. Katcher, we have talked about a treatment which has reversed the age in rats by over 54%. The link to the paper review and the interview series is above on the screen. At the end of the experiment, the rats were sacrificed. So the question as to whether the treatment would extend the lifespan was not addressed. In fact, there are now two experiments which are being run to verify this. We find these experiments very interesting and would like to share the details in this video. First, let's hear Dr. Katcher explain about the experiments in the interview. Have you continued to provide, so rats uh, average age was 3.8, you said maximum age, 3.8 years. Have you continued to provide Elixir and have we got rats older uh. than 3.8? A Belgium, um, what you call a sponsor, mm. uh, named Didier Cornell, uh, gave us money, in fact, to start exactly such a, a project where we will keep on giving the rats elixir, returning them to youth as often as is needed to see how long we can keep them alive. Hopefully. <laughs> <laughs> forever, <laughs> we'll see. They are different. The purpose of the studies is to look at longevity of rats after the elixir treatment. In the experiment, they will compare the survival of older rats treated intravenously with young plasma with that of correspondingly aged controls who are untreated. The rats will be 25 months old at the start of the experiment. Blood samples will be collected from all animals every other week in order to follow the evolution of epigenetic age over time. Here is the protocol for Dr. Katcher's experiment. 12 sprayed dory rats, which is the same type as used in the original experiment, will be allotted to one of two groups. Either A, the control group of six rats, which will receive no treatment, or B, the experimental group of six rats, which will receive a total of four intravenous injections of 0.7 to one milliliter of plasma fraction, codenamed Elixir, a further series of four injections of elixir will be given every 90 days or as needed, which will be determined by whether inflammatory cytokine levels return to the norms for their age instead of the juvenile levels reached about one month after injections. Here are the measurements for Dr. Katcher's lab. Blood samples will be taken every other week in order to determine epigenetic age during the treatment. They will also determine the levels of interleukin-6 and TNF-alpha, the markers of inflammation, as that is part of the assay for elixir performance. We expect the proposed study will help clarify whether young plasma can extend the lifespan and health span of rats when the treatment starts at an advanced age. And the sponsor has stated that they will publish the results, whether they are positive or negative. Let's start with a quick overview on the experiment and the data points that we have. The rats were 25 months old at the start of the experiment, which is about equivalent to a 62 year old person. The measurements were taken at day zero and at day 86, approximately three months later, which would then make them about equivalent to a 70 year old person. There are eight rats in each group, the control and the treatment groups and at this time they are all still alive. The figures shown on the graphs are the average for each group. Dr. Katcher's team were kind enough to provide us figures for grip strength, which is a common measure for overall body strength, then two markers for inflammation, interleukin-6 or IL-6, and tumor necrosis factor alpha or TNF-alpha, and body weight. Here we can see the grip strength. On the left are the figures for the control rats and on the right are those for those that are treated. 
It is interesting that the control group also saw an increase in grip strength, even though they were middle-aged at the start of the experiment. However, we can see that the value of the treatment group increased significantly more to over double the original value. The next measure is interleukin-6. This is a cytokine, which is a small signaling mo molecule. It has many functions, but it is commonly a marker of inflammation. IL-6 levels are normally low and serum levels are non-detectable in the absence of inflammation. With age, the levels of interleukin-6 increase. It is also one of the key components of SASP, being secreted by senescent cells. A lower level of interleukin-6 is good, showing lower inflammation. Here are the results for IL-6. The measure is given in picograms per milliliter. We can see that the level has increased in the control by 10%, which is expected as interleukin-6 generally increases with age. However, it has dropped by 30% in the treated group. The second metric that they looked for was TNF-alpha. This is another cytokine which is used in the immune system signaling and is secreted when an infection is detected to initiate an immune response. Aging is associated with increased inflammatory activity, including increased circulating TNF-alpha. TNF-alpha is a very similar story to interleukin-6, with the control group increasing by 11% and the treatment group reducing by 30% again showing a significant reduction in inflammatory markers. And the final measure was body weight. Here there seems to be no significant difference between the two groups, with both starting and ending with approximately the same average weight. This is a similar result to what was seen in the original experiment. So in summary, I think the results look good. Grip strength is up and markers of inflammation are down. However, it does seem to have not change the rat's weight. It will be interesting to see in another three months how the two groups are doing. And one more exciting news, Dr. Katcher and his team are now preparing to apply for IRB approval for a human clinical trial of E5. Cannot wait to hear more on this. We will continue to follow developments in these projects and provide updates when we learn anything new. So please do subscribe to our channel and hit the bell button for any new video release notifications. Thank you so much for your kind support. I wish you all well and we'll speak to you again soon.